welcome back to our channel. Um, today's a really exciting day. We crossed over a million in sales. We didn't even really realize it to be honest till we checked our app because I was just curious and I came up to Felicia I'm like we actually crossed a million in sales. And it's really exciting. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know if you pressed it. Yeah. Um, obviously it's really exciting but it actually makes it feel like all this hard work has been worth it especially the last five months where we've been on overdrive. So it took us a lot of hard work to get here. We're not saying any of it was easy but we just want to show you what's possible. Um, mind you, we're not rich, that's not profit, um, but a million in sales feels good because it just kind of shows the bigger picture that this place is headed the right way. And it goes to show the potential a small place like this has, um, especially, you know, starting from the ground up. Legitimately from the ground up. There was nothing in this space when we got here. We invested pretty much every penny we had um, to make it what it is and you know it's kind of been a roller coaster ride but eventually it's now shown to be a success story which are really appreciating anyone who's watching us um, over the last two years that we've been making videos by the way uh, please smash the like button just speaking of that you guys have been so supportive with liking and subscribing and commenting that it's really helped this channel we're on a steady growth as well so we're gonna keep building and bringing more and more videos in this one, we're going to probably let you guys know exactly how we got there and what it took to get there. So stay tuned. Stick to the end of this video. We kind of have a little bit of a surprise to show you. So yeah. When we first started the store, it was strictly just produce. Um, you probably know in some of our other videos what the store looked like. I'm not sure if you put pictures in there, but um, basically down both sides. So like this way and that way, it was just produce. And in the middle, where I'm standing, we had tables of just produce and nothing else. And since then, we've really expanded, as you can see. And pretty much over the last two years, we've switched this layout maybe four times. We're talking like five, six hours of, of turning moving this store, things. making it as best as possible, moving things from shelf to shelf, trying to make it as, most, as, as efficient as possible just to get the customer, you know, buying more from us, you know, realizing they can buy the product they want here. They, they don't have to go anywhere else. So that was also interesting to see how much the layout of this store changed. And if you've seen our first video, you'll see how different even from then it was. And that wasn't even where we were at bare bones. But slowly we added a shelf there, a cooler there, a freezer there. And, you know, it was basically to get the customer spending more. So our average sale went from I'd say about $9 to now it's at $21 per customer. Which means, you know, every time that door opens, the customer is spending $21 instead of nine. Which really helps on a slow day because, you know, if you only have 50 customers in a day and they spend $9, well, you didn't make any money. If you have 50 customers and they spend 20, well, you at least broke even. So on top of the improvements of the store, we actually learned how to buy better. You know, we started buying from people that sold product at the right price where we can buy it low and sell it high. And that's basically any resale business, whether it's stocks, whether it's, you know, flipping real estate, whether it's buying inventory, you always want to buy at the lowest possible and sell at the highest possible within reason. You don't want to cheat your customer. And basically what really helped us make more profit, let alone just more sales is we, we expanded into buying from more people who could buy products at a cheaper price and sell it to us at a cheaper price. So I usually show you these panoramic shots that are just kind of standstill. Felicia has made a good point. We should kind of take you on a quick tour of the store. We haven't done that in a while. So we're gonna to cut to that right now. She's excited. Please give her a round of applause. Felicia, the grocery store owner. We started, we just had produce along this wall and like down the middle, but now we actually have two coolers here full of produce and a lot of dry goods, salad dressings, all that kind of stuff down here. It's a little empty right now, but it's all pies and desserts from a local bakery. We actually had nothing here when we first started, so that was a useless wall. First opened, this was just produce. Um, but we actually expanded and got a cooler full of vegan items and keto friendly um, items and also like all our, this is like our junk food aisle, so chips, 
snacks, all that kind of stuff. Style when we first opened was literally a long table with produce on it, and now, um, yes, we have produce on both sides of our bunks, but we have dry goods, um, we have soups, tomato sauces over there. We got a lot of like fruit related items here, and it's just full as you can see. Here, it's a lot fuller than when we first opened. We actually had in this very spot, and that was it, a squash bin. Literally just a squash bin, not even full, because it was never full, but that's all we had. And now we actually have a lot of desserts. We have like cookies, pretzels, um, pita chips, angel wings, By the way, you pies. Tell them, a lot of people might not know what a squash bin is like, because we always talk about the squash bin. A squash bin is literally squash in a box. And squash is like, you know, those things that don't sell here. Yeah. We, we should go grab yeah. one because some go. of our younger viewers I'll might. go. So these are squash. You so like too. spaghetti, squash, all these things, butternut. This that's what squash. This took up half the store because we had no money to fill the store. Okay, this looks weird. The thing that did not move since we opened the store was this bad boy right here. This gets and, a lot of traffic. And this is, gets a lot of traffic um, and it hasn't broken down on us yet, knock on wood. Um, but this actually has like our garlic sauces, our dressings, like some extra dressings and just dips and stuff that needs to, need to be refrigerated. What came with, you know, making more sales and getting more uh, people to spend more is we had to learn to let go of being scared to spend money. When it comes to business, we always advise spend money wisely and spend it on things that will make you money. When personal, I know on our other videos we say, you know, save your money, use it on better things. But when it comes to business, you truly have, in this business especially, you have to spend money to make money. If we're afraid to buy things, we're not going to sell them. If we're afraid to take a chance on, you know, some new shelving to carry more stuff, we're not going to make those long-term sales. It's a short-term, you know, money out for a long-term gain that comes back to you. And this is why we're never going to stop growing. This store... I will pack it to the the limit that the fire department allows me to because I know that's the max we need to fill it in order to have employees here, in order to actually make money with those employees working full time. We need as much inventory as possible to make the most money that this space can make. We're not trying to be greedy or anything, but why not? We've paid for the space, now it's just time to keep filling it and filling it to its max potential. And that's what I advise anyone in this type of business. Fill your store with product that turns. And you will learn after a year or two years what moves, what doesn't move, and where to buy it the cheapest. To get down to the numbers on what this store costs us to build out, many people like numbers on this channel, I noticed. Top, you're looking at maybe at the top end of 70,000, the low end of 80,000, just to get it to the bare bones. We're talking tile, electrical, um, our first and last month lease that we had to pay, um, some coolers, but that's the very, very bare bones. And, you know, I didn't expect to dish that much money out, which is the reason we started with such a low amount of inventory. If I can give you one piece of advice, when you open your store, you know, allocate whatever money you have that, that you can to building inventory. It's a first impression. A lot of people will check you out you want to have a full store when you open. If your store is empty when people walk in, honestly, it's the silent killer and they won't return. You need to start with a, a lot of inventory to make it worth it. People want to go to a place that's worth it, that has things that they want to buy. And a million dollars in sales, you know, does not equal money in our pocket. You know, we took a very, very modest salary, even to this day, you know, we're by no means well off or anything like that. But this store, regardless of any of that, at a million dollars in sales, it just shows us that it's a decent asset that we currently have in our hand that should keep growing as long as you know there's no huge economic downturn in grocery, which I can't see people not needing grocery anymore no matter what happens. But you know, you never know. We're happy where we're at. We go day by day. As long as we're improving a little bit day by day, we'll end up at these milestones that we're currently shooting because um, we never really look at you know we never really look at you know these milestones as some huge accomplishment but we wanted to make this video just because 
Um, you want to take a step back and really see what you accomplished and this video was a great way to do it um, because you really can get lost in working in the business and really not seeing the bigger picture. You know, it never truly ends. I'm telling you this, the improvements we need to make never end. Even at this point, we still, we want to keep growing. We want more. We want to keep filling. And, um, you know, we want to get to the point where there is people working here that run this place efficiently, smoothly, just like we can. However, at this point, you know, two people, me and Felicia running this store, after two years at a million dollars in sales, we're very, very happy with that. And the improvements we need to make, I already can tell you, we need a freezer, you know, we need some proper shelving in certain areas. We, we could use a better coffee bar at the front, but this isn't something you can do all at once. Uh, this is a video showing you step by step on how to grow your business um, without being impatient. A lot of people want to start at the top without grinding it out like we had to at the very bottom where there literally was a squash bin with three squash and people you know would come in like you know where's your inventory and we wouldn't have an answer you know you can't spend money you don't have it has it takes a while to build inventory and this isn't to brag or boast but I'm just telling you it's gonna be day by day it's gonna be a grind retail is never easy but you're gonna have to literally be patient to get where you need to be because we're still far far where we want to be and it's gonna take time from here Thanks for watching. I hope that this video motivates you and um, it inspires you if you are planning on opening a business. Um, you know, just know that no matter how small your store is, it can be successful. So just keep working, keep grinding, and thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, like us, subscribe. I know he already said it, but. I like reading the comments, so make sure you do that too. Bye.